Hello everyone. I recently bought a bunch of broken uh, solar cells, uh, functional solar cells, they said, uh, from eBay. And uh, so I needed to test them to see how well they worked and or if they worked at all. And uh, basically sort out which ones I wanted to use, which ones I didn't want to use. So uh, the long and short of it is, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm making this video to show you what tools I use to do that and what tools you can use to do that and how the solar cell actually um, its physical attributes function. So I have one of my cracked solar cells there and I have a cheap uh, multimeter from uh, uh, this one's from Harbor Freight and this one's from Radio Shack and the difference between the two of them number one is the display is bigger on this one uh, and this one has what they call an audible um, continuity tester so when I put the leads together on this it gives me an audible beep telling me that I have a closed circuit so a complete circuit so let me just do that again you can hear it right now if you don't have that you just have a cheap meter I uh, just put it on the 200k ohm setting and you can see that it dis it's displaying one here and when you close it it displays a zero or a one uh, basically that's a closed circuit you open it up it's open closed same thing so um, I'm going to use the audible one because it's much easier to see or hear uh, I'm going to go with that so we'll just move this uh, out of the way and uh, I do have a video for Harbor Freight where you can regularly get those uh, cheap uh, meters for nothing just take in a coupon so I'll look through my videos and you'll see that so first thing I'm going to do is test the continuity of this uh, cell and show you how you know each side is its own uh, circuit so I'm just going to take it from here to here and you see that's a closed circuit and I take it from the very edge here to the very edge here and if I can get there you go it's a closed circuit there too so basically if a cell is broken uh, vertically uh, these little traces will not reach the tabs from the outside to the inside and uh, uh, it's not so much a problem in the middle because if they're broken in the middle uh, the traces go to the center but it's if, if they're broken in the center of uh, these uh, thirds or quarters here then you're gonna have a problem getting the energy from the edge to the, to the middle so um, that would probably require you to repair it but uh, I'm not going into that on this basically what you need to know is that the whole top is conductive except uh, the blue is not conductive or the black isn't conductive but all the silver you see is as you see there okay so and it goes to the tabs now the back you'll see that there's six little pads and they use those pads for soldering blobs uh, or soldering points for your tabs so so you know they're all conducting to each other so this this thing's a closed circuit across the whole back plate is actually a, a conductive surface and it's all conducts to itself so I think they basically put those pads there just to make it give you a good reference points uh, where to put your tabs to get a good uh, also probably to get good adhesion on this circuit as well but just so you know anywhere you touch on this back tab it's, it's just one closed circuit the whole thing is uh, conductive so the back is conductive and the front is conductive. Um, the front is the negative terminal and the back is the positive. So uh, from that point on here's how I tested all my hundred pa panels really quickly. Uh, so at this point I'm just going to do away with this little meter because it's kind of hard to see the display on the video. And I'm going to use my uh, Harbor Freight free uh, meter I got and I'll probably put it on about 200 to see what we get on it. So next you got to test to see is this uh, is this panel actually or this uh, cell actually outputting any output well you know you could you know connect one end here and then the other end to the back and and go through that whole process but I found a much easier and better way to do that since the back is totally conductive um, so what I what I did is I just got a piece of tin foil like this and then a little alligator clip wire like this so two ends of the analogy, just a connecting jumper cable basically. And I connected the, the positive, as the, as the back is the positive terminal for the cell. Um, the, so I put the little alligator clip on the positive terminal of my meter. And then the other part 
to the bottom of, of my uh, tinfoil plate, basically. And at this point, the next thing you do is just drop the panel on top of it like that under the light. Next thing, all you need to do next is just, let me put this a little closer here, is just touch the cell on one of the uh, tabs. Okay, so I'm getting four seven. Let's go a little, there we go. So I'm getting 0.46 volts, which is right in line. I mean, you know, I don't have the light close enough to give me the 5 volt, the 0.5 volts that it's supposed to output, but uh, close enough. And I wanted to be able to show you what's going on so that by doing this, I get you get that uh, ability. So, yeah, that cell is generating what it's supposed to be generating as far as voltage goes. If you wanted to check the amperage, you can, uh, but... You know, if you're getting 4, uh, 4 uh, 0.45 volts out of it, you're getting the proper voltage out of it. It's probably functioning correctly. Let's test it one more time. And you can see almost 5, 0.5 volts, which is what it's supposed to come out of it. So that's how you quickly test the cell, cell to see if it's functioning. Uh, the other thing you may want to check is to see how good the tabs are on it. On this one, as you can see, it's just basically, I just, oh, there it goes. It just peels right off. So I would keep the tab and re-tab that. Uh, I'm not going to cover that in this video because hey uh, there's a million videos showing you how to tab a, a solar cell this is about testing them and uh, checking how they function so we know that cell is good uh, next thing you need to see is you'll see that there's a little crack in it running horizontally and like I said the horizontal cracks aren't as big an issue unless they go all the way across of course then they would fall right off um, as, as they are uh, you know if they're vertical on the uh, cell uh, of course if they cut you know as long as they're touching the tabs you're going to get electricity out of them and what I mean is, is these lines here these tabs will pick up on them um, but regardless you see the little crack there now what I did with all the little cracks on all these uh, solar panel solar cells that I found is I just basically you know put them together on a flat surface and then use some uh, clear tape across them some uh, you know like scotch tape or whatever and basically just put it across the crack to stop the crack from going any further and, and to keep it together nicely and uh, that seems to work on every single one of the cells I, I got now if you have a severe enough crack it can short circuit the entire cell and you won't get any energy out of the cell at all right that's one of the issues you may have the other one of the issues is it might just be a defective cell from the factory and it just won't output anything so let's try this one here which looks like a perfect cell um, Oh, you can see it. Oh, yeah, there's a little crack in here. Um, so let's try this one out and see what we get. And that's on my not working pile. So once again, I'm on my tinfoil. The nice little pad I got here. And like I said, you should set this up for yourself because it just works so great. So 0.23 volt, 0 0.023. So I, I, I'm not even getting, a, a, a you know, two tenths of a volt out of this, uh, two hundredths of a volt out of this panel. Even though it looks perfect, There's, it's not functioning correctly. Now, um, if you're sorting these out quickly, then you know that that's a bad panel. Just put it on your bad panel uh, uh, stack and then go from there. Uh, but I'm going to show you, I'm going to break this one because, you know, it's probably the crack that's shorting out this whole uh, panel. So, you see, I don't know if you can see the crack there, but basically it's right here. So, I'm just going to snap that piece off like that. There we go. And you're dealing with a little thin film. This is like uh, probably about half a millimeter, maybe at the most, maybe a millimeter at the most thickness. So it breaks really easy. So you have to be really, really careful with it. Now, let's see if that fixed that panel or that uh, cell. Nope. So there's something else wrong with that panel. And at this point, I'm just going to put it away and uh, show you another panel to show you how a crack can short circuit your, your panel. Uh, your cell, I mean, sorry. Um, so, let's get a broken one here. Really broken one. There is a really broken cell. Okay, let's see if it's actually outputting anything right at this point. So, you want to get the tabs away from the, t the tin foil, so hang them over the edge like that. And, let's see what we're getting on that, if we're getting anything at all. 0.63. So, that's not a good one either. So, let's lift up that broken piece there, Let's see what we get now. Still 0.55. Yeah, that's not a lot. 
So I know there's something wrong with that panel as well. I need one that I can show you it not functioning because of a crack, which is one of the you know, reasons these uh, things are thrown into these kits anyway. So let's see this one, see if I'm getting... Okay, so that one gives me 4.73. And it is a, a severely cracked panel, as you can see here. Um, got a serious crack in it, okay? So, let's try that again. So, even though it's cracked, it appears to be giving me voltage. Now, what can happen with a, with a, a panel like this is the crack can short the front or the top of the panel to the bottom of the panel, and that short circuits the panel and it no longer works. So, let me show you how that would work. See if I can make it happen by forcing it to happen. Yeah, of course, it's not going to short me. There. So now the top and the bottom of the panel are shorting out to each other because the crack, when, the, when you get a, a panel that's like this, when you do this to it, it short circuits. Basically, you go from a straight top and bottom on each other, making contact, and the positive on the top and the negative on the back, and the positive on, on the uh, uh, bottom, and sorry, the positive on the, t on the bottom, negative on the top. And when you, when you create a crack, they basically cross each other and then short circuit the, p the panel. And that's what I've done here on purpose. So there, it's not short circuiting anymore. Let's see if I can make a short circuit. There. Now it's short circuiting. All right. So the cracks can cause the panel to short circuit. And uh, if you can get the cracks apart and fix it, you know, basically put them back together like that one, right? I just did right there. And maybe a little bit of clear tape on it. And you'll have a good cell again. So that one there, and obviously as you can see the tab is really loose on that as well. So it's going to need to be re-tabbed. So I'm going to save that panel because it's 90% good. And, uh, you know, why not use it? So I can fix that. So, what you basically need to do is check to see if the panel is actually uh, outputting any, out any voltage. And if it's not, you have to figure out, you know, do you want to fix it or do you just want to throw it into your scrap pile? I would just, when I was sorting them out, I sorted out the best ones I could find right off the bat and uh, created a good pile. And then, um, you know, I, I saw the more broken ones, which were, I don't know, maybe 80% busted or 80% there, sorry. And, you know, basically put those on another pile. And while I was doing that, I was testing each one for voltage to make sure that I was getting, uh, you know, uh, I was not putting good uh, panels in with bad ones. So this little testing unit with the tin foil hooked up to your to your meter, uh, and dropping the panel on it so that the so that the uh, leads don't and land on it. So basically, we're going to go this way like that. Um, it's a great. I found that a great way, or this a great way to plow through these uh, solar cells quickly and uh, basically stack the good ones uh, on one side. The uh, really cracked up ones that are, are working on the other side and the not functioning at all uh, solar cells uh, aside for later uh, investigation. So uh, that's my uh, quick and dirty trick to testing solar cells really fast. Um, and uh, good luck. Hopefully uh, you'll have good results with your uh, broken solar cells. All right, this will be my bonus feature on this video. As you can see now, that crack is uh, all the way across horizontally. And again, it's still not totally broken off. And, and the tab on this side is actually making contact with the front. So I'm just going to lay it down on a flat surface here. And just put some uh, clear tape on it and fix it up. So I'll do that quickly here. Just using a little bit. And uh, you got to be really careful with the clear tape and putting it on there because once you put it on there, it's basically on for life. Uh, these things are so thin, if you try to pull that tape off, you're more than likely going to break it. So, there I go. Here I go. I got a nice long piece. And I, what, I, what you want to avoid is this covering those little solder pads. So, I'm just going to overlay it on the bottom like this. And nice and flat all the way across. that there we go and you see that it gets darker when you press it down and that holds it pretty good and it's nice and flat now I got this excess on the side there no big deal 
take your scissors and just carefully slice off the excess. There we go. And though the crack is there, that's going to hold it on pretty good. It's not going to go too much further. You can put, extend it a little bit further on that side if you wish. Again, work on a flat surface when you're doing that. And uh, once again, when you're done doing your repair, <laughs> don't do that. Uh, dropping these are most times going to, you know, from any height, it's going to destroy the thing. So there we go. Let's see if that still works. There we go. 4.5. So close enough to a half a volt. And another thing I wanted to show you, just as a bonus here, as you can see, I get 4.5 volts. And if the cell is working correctly, that's what you're, you're going to get, 4.5 to 5.5 uh, volts. Now let me show you a little broken piece like this. Just a little broken piece. Uh, maybe that wasn't a good example. It looks like a bad cell. Let me get another one. Sorry. That's why we have this system. So I'll just drop that one on there. And 4.5. So it's it's a good cell. It's, though it's broken, it's still generating almost uh, 0.5 volts. But, you know, a good cell will always do that, give you that 0.5 volts. Uh, the difference is, it, it, basically, the area of the cell determines the amperage. So let's go check the amperage on it now. So 9.5. All right, 9.2 milliamps because I'm in the 200 milliamp uh, area. So let's take that out of there and just put our other broken cell on there. The one we just fixed, put that back on. And as you can tell, 54. So I get a way more amperage out of that one than I was out of the other little one. So surface area determines the amperage. Uh, the voltage is, should be the same regardless. Uh, I'm not sure whether that uh, goes to the very smallest of uh, panels or, or uh, sorry, solar cell pieces. Uh, but uh, basically, if you wanted to piece together them, uh, a solar cell, you can. And I'll probably make a video on how to do that as well. Let's try this little piece just for fun. No, oh, I'm on amperage. I've got to go back to voltage. I was 1.2. So I'm getting a nice voltage out of that. No, actually I'm not. <laughs> yeah, so this, that's too small for our testing purposes. I'll put that in a broken pile. Again, this whole system will help you sort through these things quickly. I'll put this back here. There we go. That's a fairly short, yeah, 458 millivolts. So point, almost 0.5 uh, volts, which is the spec voltage for all these uh, solar cells. Thanks. That's it for my video. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like this video and it helped you out in some way, do me a favor, click on the like button right down here. And uh, you know, if you wish to subscribe to my channel, just click on this link up here. And that should subscribe you to the, the uh, Richard Lloyd channel or Richard Lloyd USA channel. Um, okay, again, thank you very much for your time and watching.